We are Bereans at the Gate. Welcome to our video blog for March 21st, 2018. Last time we spent all of our time talking about an article written by Michael Gerson uh, about, I think it was The Last Temptation of Evangelicals or something along those lines. I probably mangled the title, but uh, we got, uh, I don't know, some unbelievable amount of comments on our video blog, mostly from three or four people arguing. Let's be very clear about it. Um, but still, interesting arguments, interesting discussion. So we decided to devote some of our time today to sort of following up on this. Uh, and there are a lot of issues I think we need to unpack. Let's talk about this one first. How do we as believers show disapproval of a political figure? Is there a good way to do that, a bad way to do that? And should we as believers then, I think guess by extension in this argument, be showing disapproval to Donald Trump in some sort of an active way? And Bert, what do you think? Well, I think that Christians uh, ultimately should behave as good citizens. So what one should do is, is uh, express your dissatisfaction when the vote comes up. I think that would be the most important thing. Also, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, expressing dissatisfaction at individual policies, proposing mm -hmm. policies that you think will be better, or with the individual person in this case. So if we look at uh, some of uh, Trump's behavior, during his uh, first uh, year as president. And yeah. I think we could find things there that certainly I would find objectionable and would not want in a leader. So do we, do we do those things at a personal level when we interact with people who say, hey, for instance, they might say, hey, hey to me, what do you think about what Trump has been doing lately? Do I, is it my obligation then to immediately say, you know what? I think he's been a scoundrel on this issue, and that's part of my witness. Is that how we approach this? I mean, Mark, what do you think? I, I don't think I would start out like that. Uh -huh. I, I think I would engage in normal conversation, and if it comes up naturally in the conversation, which it often does. So if the president's perfidy comes up naturally, we should then <laughs> deal with it. I, I, take, I think that you can see the opportunity to, to express your, your opinion on it uh, civilly, of course. Sure. Uh, and, and hopefully keep them civil too, the other, the other party. Uh, I don't have any problem with doing that, but I think it's the proper context. That's, that's what I would say. Not, I, I'm not a proselyte. I'm not going around just catching people off the streets and saying, Donald Trump, horrible person, right? Do something now. Let's all get together into a mob, right? You're not going into the highways and byways evangelizing for Trump, so what you're saying? <laughs> well, I'm not. On the other hand, I'm not going into the highways and byways and, uh, and, and just, uh, uh, um, trying to, to uh, um, criticize him at every opportunity either. Which I guess the question kind of comes down to should we? Should, should we, we no. be doing that? Should I, we be no. more open uh, about our disagreements because we have some sort of an obligation to be open yeah. and the vocal? Venue. The venue's everything. So the venue defines what yeah. we ought to do. If, if we write, we could write that legitimately. Articles, for example, or blogs. If we speak, we can speak and, and address that if the issue is, that's part of the issue that we're speaking to, really. I wouldn't want to get too much off track. Uh, but if it's not, I don't think we have to go out of our way to attack or to, to defend Donald Trump. I don't think that that was really kind of what was in the kind of the thrust sure. of the comments. I think a lot of the, the folks that were writing are, are concerned more about the public criticism well, yeah. in the public debate. Yeah. Sure. And that's, you know, sorry to be repetitive to some of the comments that I made on, on the blog post, but it seems to me it's very difficult for us to, to achieve that objective to show that we, we don't, uh, you know, aren't very happy about a particular thing because the media is going to control which kind of voices get heard and they often will choose voices that serve that agenda, whatever that agenda is. Right. I mean, uh, as I said, they're not going to go to Russell Moore very often right. uh, on his criticisms of the president. And so that's part of the problem as well. I mean, that, that nobody's really criticizing you or really any of us for, for sure. not privately telling somebody at church and, and, and that, you know, Mr. Trump's a lousy person. I, I don't think. Although there were some of the comments that said, well, you know, in my church, uh, uh, that, you know, everybody seems to be on, totally on board with, with, with Trump. They don't seem to even care. And... Um, I suppose there's some truth to that, but well, I think more of the concern is, is, is the public face of Christianity is not seen as being against Trump. In fact, everything that, that we see in terms of the public face of Christianity is a reminder, evangelicals support Trump, evangelicals support that, Trump. That's what the media... And, and the media are creating that. I, I, I agree it's a large part, uh, but anyway, and then so we even have po the latest poll results and, and what one of our posts is, well, well, look at the latest. You can't even believe... You can't... Uh, yes, you know, you're, you can't make this up. <laughs> okay. Well, if that's true, but what does that mean in terms of support? Uh, do they? Because I like a lot of things. I, I suppose that probably every one of us likes at least some particular policy, mm -hmm. Mr. Trump. Yeah. While we would condemn other policies, how do you deal with and that? And personal behavior. Yeah, and so we have Stormy Daniels, and, and I have yeah. I have 
apparently America's supposedly uh, all caught up in that. I haven't even looked at it myself. <laughs> but what I think I've heard is, is some affair from maybe seven or eight years ago. Yeah. I ten, no, ten years, ten years ago. ago. Okay. Yeah. Why would I care about something that happened ten years ago? Myself personally, I, this is me. But yeah, if you search for that, don't do it on your work computer. I'll just say that. <laughs> there, there are complications <laughs> with that. So, um, that, I mean, it's an interesting issue. I think. I mean, Bert, do you have anything to add to it? Follow up with here. Relative to the whole discussion of how we show disagreement, what's well, proper, what's improper. Again, I, 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 let me give a, just a personal anecdote. When uh, Trump was first uh, the, uh, the candidate, mm -hmm. I walked into our house church and naively just simply said, this is what I think about this guy's policies, what I think mm -hmm. about him. And um, come to find out, I think I was like maybe the only one. one. <laughs> the, only one? <laughs> the only one? The only one. Oh the only one. I don't know what was wrong with these people. <laughs> But uh, it's, uh, it, it can't, you know, will, it, it is a point of strife and, yes. and, and, yeah. and tension. Yeah. Um, but again, to be a good citizen, we have to be involved. Sure. And I, I somewhat lament our culture where we seem to be so caught up in what's going on politically. Yeah. Um, we, I, wish we, I wish we could uh, just tone it down just a little yeah. bit, you know, yeah. you know, the tribal thing. We weren't well, quite yeah, yeah, so, in, so involved. Keep it in uh, its context. And I think some people even see this almost as a matter of branding. You know, are you branded as an anti-Trumper or as a pro-Trumper? Well, and those labels don't yeah. fit all the nuance and the dynamics the of an administration. And that's so exactly the problem. People want to interpret us and perceive us in a certain way, and some of that's justified, but man, you have to be a little bit more subtle and a little bit more willing to look at individual issues as they pop up, at least I think sometimes. Yeah, Jeff. I will certainly say on the other side of the, the aisle from us or philosophical debate, you cannot be indignant enough against Trump. <laughs> there is no level of indignation that I could have against Mr. Trump that would ever be satisfactory because yeah. the vitriol is so high. That, that, the, the nuance issue, we've lost our, our ability, at least in certain circles, to, to nuance anything anymore. Yeah. All right? And that's, that's a problem. For us, but again, I go back to this whole thing. In the proper setting, I think it's legitimate to criticize or, or praise, blame or praise, as we used to say in Roman Empire, right? A particular person. Right. Um, and in my church, if we if we talk about personal ethics, and and the issue of Trump comes up, we pretty much all agree the guy's kind of a jerk, right? Yeah. If we talk about policies, we'll have people Thanks on back. both sides of the issue. Um, so, yeah. I'll play devil's advocate sure. just a little bit to maybe take some of the sides, which I haven't heard, but I, I did hear one person make a comment to me this. Well, if, if, if Mr. Obama had done anything like this, you guys would have been all over him. You would have, uh, uh, you know, criticized him immensely, which, which is, is true. We would have criticized yeah. him, and, and most of us have, have cri criticized Mr. Trump. In fact, all of us have written things harsh on Mr. O uh, Trump on yeah. our blog. Yeah. But would we have done the same levels? Perhaps not. I, I think I uh, kind of made the point on the blog. Look, it's kind of hard to why, why write about condemning Mr. Trump on on Stormy Daniels when no one is is advocating. Yeah, these having adulterous affairs with is really a good thing. Right. Nobody's taking that position. Sure. Right. But yeah. so what's the point of condemning? And just you know, whatever. so that's one thing. The other thing that's very interesting to me, and, and Bert, you may comment because you're I know you're a big road to serfdom guy. There is a, a good point in there. Uh, Hayek repeatedly says, and when he's developing what's happening to the strong man, there are many of the people in German, the, the Christians even apologize. You know, I don't like Herr Hitler, but. And so are we doing some of that? Uh, that's what they that's would an say. That's question. I don't like Mr. Trump, but. And so is, is that a fair comparison to Trump, Hitler? I, I don't think so. No. Right. But you can see, the, it, at the time, it wasn't perceived yet either. And I that's think right. that's some of the concerns of our audience. And it, well, yeah. Let me build on go, that go a little bit, yeah. because I think that you, you've hit on uh, an important point. And I think the comparisons between Trump and Hitler would be kind of crazy and mm -hmm. wouldn't make any, any sense. However, there is a movement now globally towards a kind of nationalism, which Trump is mm -hmm. certainly representative of. Mm -hmm. And if globally we move back and have that model uh, become the norm uh, and it grows stronger, I think it doesn't bode well. And as much yeah. as we are allowing that to occur by failing to be uh, critical of our president, I think that can be problematic. Let me ask, ask you guys In that this. respect. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, undoubtedly. When we look at, uh, at, at the, particularly the New Testament, mm -hmm. there are characteristics of uh, qualifications that we expect of leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, of pastors, church leaders. And elders. Church. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And do we also expect that same standard of our, of our political leaders? Because I think we, as a broader culture, probably don't. 
but I think part of what is happening here is that I, there's this expectation that Christians should not be happy with oh, having a leader mm -hmm. that um, behaves like, like our president. I, I think right. there's kind of a conflagration right. there right. of those <laughs> ideas. I'm not sure that it's uh, incorrect, to be yeah. honest with you. Now, yeah. you know, <coughs> in Christ, one can be forgiven. You know, President Trump could uh, repent uh, today, and before God, he could, he could you know, he, he would be forgiven. But that doesn't mean, again, in my mind, that he's still qualified to you know, have certain uh, leadership. And I, I think that's a problem. And I really believe the Republicans as a whole and the uh, Christian element in the Republican Party should be more vocal for that reason. And we're, we're setting a really low standard here for our yeah. world, our culture. Yeah. Yeah. Let, well, me, let me play on the, your really theological right. point because in, uh, uh, you can be forgiven, but the consequences of sin live on. Sure. So yeah. m Mr. Trump may have gotten elected, but the consequences of his actions should live on, and we should have a good conservative uh, challenger to him in the primary. Yeah, agree. And, well, and we talked last time, but I'll just follow. I just think about that even more. I am quite certain we will have a challenger to Mr. Trump in 2020, even if the real question is, will the establishment get behind that challenger? Because somebody's going to want a posture for 2024. Sure. And so who will that be? So yeah. If you're talking about a good moral uh, candidate, if, if we can think in those terms, so what you're saying? Uh, I, I'm saying anything <laughs> back to kind of normal. <laughs> okay, well, well, again, if you had a Christian that yeah, was love, a, that. a believer, that. so let's Can't say another, another George W. Bush yeah, level, yeah, level yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, Christian, yeah, yeah. I think we've got big problems because so much of, uh, of the evangelical church is supportive of Trump. I think that you'd have a split. I, I, like, I mean, well, they, yeah. Undoubtedly, we'll have, we will have a split in the primary. The question is, would they not come back? I, I'm not sure, uh, but I Maybe think it's it, incumbent upon us to, to have that battle. Might depend on who the Democrats are. Yeah. You know, Trump, uh, he was as much the anti-Hillary candidate as yeah, he was the yeah, pro-Trump exactly. Yeah, he was. Anyway, yeah. Go, ahead. Bert, go ahead, Mark. You want to get back to what you were saying and direct, address it directly. In the whole history of, of, of Christian political thought, right, every, every single writer, major writer as well as minor writers, has ex extolled the importance of virtue in a, in a leader, a ruler. Right. Yeah. All right? We should do no less as Christians. I agree with that. The problem we face... And this is the same problem they faced. That was their ideal, but they knew they could never achieve it. Yeah. So what do you do? The difference is they couldn't choose who they had. You, you never they were actually monarchs. achieve it in a pastor either. We can't, that's right. right. Yeah, and, right. Do you, and the other question related to that is, do you hold a secular leader to the same standard you do a church leader? Precisely. Well, I, I was actually right. kind of trying yeah. to ask Virtue, that yes. Right. You guys. Yeah. You hold them to a level of virtue, yes. But what is, that, what is the term virtue encompass sure. for a secular leader? It certainly does encompass some of what you see in yeah. there. Honesty, uh, integrity, yeah. Yeah. some sure, consistency sure. between your actions and your words yeah. and sorts of things. And Absolutely. By most of those standards, Mr. Trump doesn't, doesn't measure up. <laughs> doesn't measure. Unfortunately. Right. So puts us sort of back to square one. So let's, let's tackle one more issue if we have time. We've, <laughs> we're already running on. Um, <laughs> one of our comments presupposed, I think, that there's something, maybe something of a break between elites and evangelicals themselves. So people like... Um, you know, Mr. Metaxas, Mr. Jeffress, and uh, Mr. Former Governor Huckabee and others are sort of becoming the face of evangelicalism and they're pro-Trump. Uh, but is there a split between evangelicals as a whole and these elites? Is this more of an elite phenomenon that we're seeing as a pro-Trump thing, or do you think that's more of a tried and true? You know, you brought up polling. The polling seems to suggest mm -hmm. that there's a really strong amount of approval, mm -hmm. whatever that means, among evangelicals. Do you, yeah. Is this what you guys are seeing on the ground? That there's still a fair bit of uh, evangelical support? Yeah. I see that. I, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. That. Bert? I see that. Yeah, I, I, really, I really think so. So I think that... Uh, so go ahead. ahead. So I think the challenge is really because uh, we need to... Everybody that I know that is of that stripe are liking some of the things he's doing. Yeah. They've kind right. of made... And this is, I think, what the anger is. The, they've made peace. He's it for mm -hmm. another X time. So I think that's why it's so incumbent upon mm -hmm. uh, us that have other points of view to engage in the political process for the next primary season yeah. to support some yeah. other option. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just don't see any evidence that there's any fracturing yeah. myself. No. Um, yeah, among the elites, I think there is a, f a fissure that's not been mentioned a whole lot by, by people like Gerson and like we mentioned sure. the other day. Yeah. Uh, I think of the, that whole reformed camp, for example. Yep. Uh, that's been the, a, a more intellectually oriented um, evangelical elites that never gets mentioned. Al Mohler. Al Mohler. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I would bet this. I would have right. 
bet that amongst evangelical elites, there's much more of a split over Trump than there is uh, amongst the, uh, the amongst the rank and file. Yeah, I think they're more because they're more divided at the elite level than at the mass more, level. More, yeah. more anti-Trump yeah, yeah, sentiment yeah. at the elite level than there is yeah, yeah. in the uh, hunting blinds. Yes. And, and <laughs> just as an example of this, I mean, all four of us would rather, would not like Mr. Trump to be the president. There's many that, and within our churches, that are pretty happy, I think. Is that fair? Yeah, no, I, yeah, think, I think that's, that's fair. pretty fair. I think yeah. that's fair. I haven't seen a lot of movement yeah. from what I saw before the election, honestly, So, which is a little troubling to me yeah. because he's fulfilled some of my worst expectations, but he's also done some good things. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's by just, mistake. But again, it's just my perspective. <laughs> what I, what you know? I see Not by in mistake, but well, without <laughs> uh, a philosophy. Right. 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 Well, what I'm saying he is, has I think lead, it's, he it's has people, people that he's appointed him. have yeah. done very good things. They've done yeah. Yeah. Things. We, we ought to canonize right. the Federal yeah. Society. And the Heritage Foundation, too. The Heritage Foundation, they've been some good stuff. How long those people will remain around, Mr. Trump? We don't know. You never know from day to day. We just don't know, so. Very interesting. Uh, continue the comments, continue the discussion. I'm sure we'll have a lot more to say about Mr. Trump as we move into the future. A lot more topics we could discuss. We've already run out of time. Thank you for viewing. Thank you for your comments. Continue to support us, uh, and we will see you next time.